At first, when, when I saw him, he, he, his eyes were open and he just, he had a, a blank stare, just a blank stare. Just straight away, he wasn't breathing. I could see he wasn't breathing, I could feel that he wasn't breathing, so I made the call. I got him flat on the floor and listened for a few seconds. No, I know what's wrong, he's had a cardiac arrest. I had someone else with me, luckily, so they phoned for an ambulance straight away. I just said to him, oh, you, you know, you're not going to die. You're not going to die here, you're not going to die today. And I felt confident and competent enough because of the training I'd had that I could assist in that situation. And the quicker you can get there and start the CPR, the more chance you've got of bringing someone back. It may hopefully be something that you never have to use, but when you do have to use it, it will be the most important thing in helping save somebody's life. Do it. Don't stand around and wait for somebody else to do it. You could miss the moment. It's human nature to jump in and to help other people when you can. In that situation, I saw someone who needed my help and I gave it. Very grateful that I knew what to do. I'm very grateful for the training I've had. When it comes to giving CPR and saving someone's life, you don't want to lose any time. I suddenly had a cardiac arrest and I down I went. I was very fortunate in it by people who saw me and they leapt into action because they had been trained and as a result, here I am today. Just know that I'm very grateful to you. I'm sort of oh, right. there. Nice to meet you. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you both. Thank you both. Yesterday was my university graduation. It was so important to us to have Dad there with us in the pictures. Because without you two, that wouldn't have been the same. Reuniting this family today and seeing the family together, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a heartwarming feeling. It's good. It's good. It doesn't take a hero to do that. It just takes a very ordinary person. I'm a dad, I'm not a hero. I'm extremely grateful that somebody spent time training them so they knew what to do. You need to be prepared for that one moment, that one family member, that one stranger, that one good friend. His children and my children have still got a dad, and um, he's very special to us. There's no greater thing you can do for someone than to save their life. Hi, I'm Emily. And I'm Ashraf. And we're going to show you just how easy it is to learn CPR. CPR is short for cardiopulmonary resuscitation, so it's no wonder people call it CPR. What it's reminding you to do is call, push, rescue. CPR is something very simple and easy to learn, something that you can do to keep blood flowing to a person's body and brain when their heart has stopped beating. This is known as a cardiac arrest. A cardiac arrest is the ultimate medical emergency and without immediate help, that person will not survive. Now there are lots of myths around CPR that often stop people from getting involved and trying resuscitation. They're afraid they'll hurt the person or make the situation worse. But if that person has had a cardiac arrest, they will die within minutes unless someone helps them immediately. So there really is nothing to lose by trying. And don't worry about breaking ribs. It's possible this could happen, but a broken rib is far better than not surviving. The chances are you're most likely to have to resuscitate someone you know, like a friend or a family member. We'll also talk you through how to do CPR on a child and how to use a defibrillator, known as a public access defibrillator. Public access defibrillators are available for any member of the public to use in the event of a cardiac arrest. So if you do happen to be in the right place at the right time, we really want you to feel confident about getting involved. Because the worst thing you can do is nothing. OK, let's start practising. First, place your mannequin in front of you, like this. The mannequin's chest should be at your knees, with its head to one side. 
Now to help you practice more easily, there's a little tab under the chest which says hard and soft. Can you see it? When it's pulled out, it activates a clicker that helps you know how hard and deep to push. But you can turn the clicker sound off by pushing the tab in, like this. But let's leave it on for now. Make sure it's pulled out so the word hard is showing. Now, when you press down deep enough, you'll hear a click. Let's warm up with one of the most important parts first, which is pushing on the chest. Place the heel of one hand on the centre of the chest. Place the heel of the other hand on top of the first and interlock your fingers, just as Ashraf is doing. And now, with your arms straight, push down and then let the chest rise all the way back up again. Are you pushing straight down? Don't worry about making mistakes, this is just practice. Make sure that the heel of your hand is in the centre of the chest. Try leaning further over the mannequin if you don't hear a click. And remember to keep your arms straight. If you're pushing hard enough, you'll hear a click. All right, you've just done one of the most important parts of CPR, pumping blood around the body. First, let's push on the chest just like we did before. Put the heel of your hand on the centre of the mannequin's chest. Lock your fingers together. Keep your elbows straight and push the chest down at least five centimetres. Do this 30 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Push on the chest again, thirty times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40. Are you pushing down at least 5 centimetres? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Make sure you push hard and fast on the chest. Keep doing sets of 30 pushes on the chest until someone else can take over. How do you know if the person really needs you to push on their chest in the first place? Watch us for a moment. Let's say we've just arrived at a scene where someone's collapsed. After making sure it's safe to approach your casualty, the first thing you should do is gently shake the person's shoulders and shout something. Hello, can you hear me? If the person doesn't move or wake up, they're unconscious and we'd better shout for help. Shout loudly to try to attract attention. If someone is nearby, ask them to wait. You may need their help. Help! I need some help over here. Call an ambulance and get a defibrillator. Tell them this person is unconscious and not breathing. If no one's around, you'll have to call for an ambulance yourself. Ambulance service, please. I have someone who's not breathing. The operator will ask you some important questions so that help can be sent quickly and to the right place. If possible, use the speaker option on your phone. The emergency operator can usually coach you through the steps of CPR, so do not hang up the phone unless you are told to do so. OK, now you try. Make sure you practice all of the steps. You have just found someone who has collapsed. It's safe to approach, so gently shake the person's shoulders and shout. Are you all right? Can you hear me? The person doesn't move or wake up. Shout for help, loudly. Help! I need some help over here. OK, that's good. Call an ambulance and get a defibrillator. Tell them this person is unconscious and not breathing. After you've called for an ambulance or have sent someone else to call, start pushing on the chest. Just like you did before, put your hands in the centre of the mannequin's chest. Keep your elbows straight and push the chest down at least five centimetres. Do this 30 times. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, forty. Allow the chest to rise back up completely between compressions. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Keep your nine, arms ten, straight 11, as you push. 30, 40, it makes it a lot easier. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Continue pushing on the chest 30 times for as long as you can until help arrives or the casualty starts to breathe normally again. For practice, now that you've learned this very simple life-saving skill, we'll do it together all the way through the steps of CPR. This time Emily will run through the procedure with you. Are you ready? Begin. Hello? Are you all right? Can you hear me? Help! I need some help over here. I need you to call an ambulance and get a defibrillator. Tell them this person is unconscious and not breathing. Start pushing on the chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Keep your arms straight as you push. It makes it a lot easier. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Help has arrived and has taken over doing the CPR. Now we'll turn off the clicking sound so that you get to practice without any help from the mannequin clicker. Push the tab in completely. Let's go through the whole sequence again, from discovery till the arrival of help. Be sure to push hard and fast on the chest. Hello? Are you all right? Can you hear me? Help! I need some help over here. I need you to get an ambulance and a defibrillator. Tell them this person's unconscious and not breathing. Start pushing on the chest. Do it along to the beat of the music. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Are you pushing down at least five centimeters? 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 30 more pushes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Keep your arms straight as you push. It makes it a lot easier. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Allow the chest to rise back up completely between compressions. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. OK, well done. You're doing brilliantly. If you get tired, then get someone else to take over and you can show them how it's done. Now, you've already learnt the core skills of CPR for an adult. But what about children? Well, it's a sad fact that many children do not receive resuscitation because people are worried that they'll make things worse. Don't worry. You can't make things worse. And it's far better to use the same simple steps of adult CPR on a child who is not responsive and not breathing than to do nothing at all. However, there is one small change you can make to make the CPR skills you've learned more appropriate for children over one year old. First, let's get the mannequin ready for child CPR. Do you remember the tab under the chest? Make sure it is pulled all the way out so that the word soft is showing. Like before, place the mannequin's chest at your knees with its head to one side. On a child, place the heel of only one hand in the centre of the chest, just as Ashraf is doing. If you find it too difficult to push using just one arm, you can use two, as you did before with the adult. Whatever you need to do to make sure you compress the chest to the correct depth. Push down at least one-third of the depth of the chest. 
Watch Ashraf to see what this looks like. Now, follow along with Ashraf. Push 30 times on the chest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty. Now you know how to do CPR for a child. It's a lot like adult CPR, isn't it? The only difference is that you need to compress the chest one-third of its depth. It doesn't matter whether you need to use one or two hands to achieve this. Remember, if you're not sure whether they are a child or a small adult, you're not going to harm them whether you use the child or adult technique, because they are so similar. So there you have it, CPR in all its basic life-saving simplicity. That wasn't so bad, was it? Now you know how to give immediate help to an adult whose heart has stopped beating. The real beauty of this is, if you come across a child who needs CPR, you can use the same techniques quite safely. When someone's heart stops pumping blood, the earlier you give CPR, the better chance they have of surviving. But for most casualties, CPR alone isn't enough. Sometimes it's an abnormal rhythm that causes the heart to suddenly stop pumping blood. The person collapses, becomes unresponsive and stops breathing normally. A public access defibrillator, or just defibrillator, is a machine that can read or analyse the heart rhythm and tell you if an electric shock is needed to stop the abnormal rhythm. Defibrillators can now be found in lots of public places, and they're known as public access defibrillators. So if one is available, ask someone to bring it while you begin CPR. Let me show you how this works. I've got the defibrillator. The ambulance is on its way. Keep doing the CPR while I attach the pads. As soon as the defibrillator arrives, turn it on and follow its instructions. It will tell you what to do. Some defibrillators turn on automatically when you lift the lid. Others require you to push the on button. Follow the prompts, but try to avoid interrupting the CPR as much as possible. Peel off the pad labelled 1 and stick to the bare skin of the patient, exactly as shown in the picture. Peel off the pad labelled 2 and stick to the bare skin of the patient, exactly as shown in the picture. Defibrillators are very simple to operate and have been designed for any member of the public to use safely and effectively without any previous training. Do not touch the patient. Analyzing heart rhythm. If the defibrillator finds a heart rhythm that can be helped with a shock, it will tell you to push the shock button. Shock advised. Stay clear. And clear. Press the flashing orange button now. Shock delivered. Begin CPR now. CPR is frequently still required after the defibrillator has given its shock and must be started when the defibrillator prompts you without delay. Continue until you see obvious signs of life or the defibrillator tells you to stop so it can reanalyze the heart rhythm. Just keep following its commands until the casualty moves or breathes normally. Let's hope you never have to use CPR. But if a situation arises when help is needed, don't hesitate, you know what to do. If you see an adult who has collapsed, go ahead and do the other skills. Check for responsiveness. Shout for help. Check for normal breathing. Phone for an ambulance. And keep pushing on the chest hard and fast. That's better than doing nothing at all. Please don't just stand around thinking someone else can do it better or that you're going to mess it up. If in doubt, when you call for an ambulance, they can talk you through CPR if you're unsure or have forgotten anything. Remember, a person who has stopped breathing cannot get better without immediate help. And now you know how to provide that help. Thanks for your time. 
We really hope you feel more confident now about helping someone in an emergency. All you need to do is remember, call, push, rescue.